905. Welcome back to the Chad HD Show on News Talk 95.1 FM and 790 AM. KFYO. Hope you're having a wonderful Monday morning. A big day down in Austin. As maybe we'll see some movement on property tax reform. Joining us to uh, talk about property tax reform and maybe even uh, an increase in the sales tax if everything works out on property tax reform. The governor of our great state, Governor Greg Abbott. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Uh, I appreciate you joining us today. Uh, There are still a lot of questions, uh, obviously, with what's going on uh, down in Austin with the legislature. It was expected on Thursday uh, that we would have some movement on property tax reform. That kind of got blown up. Uh, And we, we haven't seen any movement yet as far as voting out property tax reform in the House or in the Senate. Are your expectations today that we're going to see movement on property tax reform uh, in in either the House or the Senate? First, uh, just to explain to your audience, and that is uh, there's been a tremendous amount of movement uh, beginning back uh, all through the course of last year uh, in November uh, when the uh, School Finance Uh, Reform Commission uh, passed out uh, their study and in meetings that we had with uh, myself, the Lieutenant Governor, the Speaker, and other leaders in the House and Senate in December, and then all through January, February, and March, leading us to where we are today. So bottom line is that there's been tremendous movement with regard to uh, plans and strategies to reduce property taxes in Texas. And what you're talking about is really when will the votes begin to take place? And uh, the votes uh, probably uh, will be taking place this week. Uh, I can't tell you for certain uh, they will take place today. Uh, there is, if, listen, if property taxes is, is a very complex issue. And if it were easy uh, to do and easy to fix, it would have been fixed a long time ago. What we do know, obviously, is that property taxes are way too high. They go, they're growing too much, to, uh, forcing people out of their homes. And we must pass changes uh, that will reform and actually reduce the property taxes you pay. And it, it takes a while uh, to work your way, for, for legislators to work their way through all the different strategies and make sure that the math is working out, all that kind of stuff. And so it's not the kind of thing that you just decide overnight uh, on an impulse that you feel one way or the other. It takes a, a, a lot of study and analysis to make sure that it's done right. Governor, you have, uh, I believe it was on Thursday, uh, you said that you would not sign a bill uh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, that you would not sign a bill that did not include a trigger, this uh, you know, 2.5% or maybe whatever the lawmakers uh, end up sending to you, but a trigger on school districts. Is that correct? Yeah, and let me explain what that means. Uh, first, because uh, I know you keep up with it, but we want to make sure your audience uh, understands what's going on. Uh, one reason that uh, your audience's property tax bills are so high uh, is, is because uh, of – Two things. One is because appraisal rates uh, can go up uh, 10% per year uh, on your home, even uh, though inflation is not going up that much. Uh, the other is because uh, property taxes uh, and the rate of it can be increased by up to 8% per year uh, without uh, the popula- without the voters having the ability uh, to roll back those rates. And uh, so uh, we're doing several things this session. One is the state of Texas already, not the state, that the, the House has already passed a bill, the Senate will pass a bill uh, that will add about $6 billion every biennium uh, for education. In, in exchange for that, uh, I think uh, that we need to limit the ability of school districts from being able to increase your tax rates by more than 2.5%. They will have a lot of revenue uh, to make sure they're able to pay for all their costs, all their expenses, for teacher pay raises, etc. cetera. Uh, but uh, if we are going to lower your property tax rate, uh, we must be able to limit the ability of school districts from coming back in and increasing that tax rate. I'm visiting with Governor Greg Abbott here on the Chad Easty Show. I want to get into the sales tax portion of this here in just a second, Governor. Uh, but I, I do want to ask you this. The lieutenant governor uh, last week on my show, he, he kind of gave some wiggle room on that on that trigger amount. He said 25 to 4%, but not more than 4%. 
it, it, do you have a, a line that, that you would draw right now and say, I'm not going to sign a bill that includes a trigger uh, uh, amount at 5% or 6%. It has to be between 25 to 4% or maybe a different figure. Well, you're mentioning one of the complexities I want to make sure your audience keeps up with here, and that is there are many different taxing authorities. One is schools, and I know that the lieutenant governor is in agreement in making sure that schools are limited uh, at increasing taxes or tax rates by more than 2.5%. What he was talking about when he mentioned some flexibility of up, above 2.5% was with cities, counties, and other taxing authorities other than school districts. Uh, and I know that uh, he is working with House leaders uh, to find out what the appropriate limit would be uh, for cities, counties, and other taxing authorities except for school districts. Okay. Uh, I think that everybody, uh, at least the majority of the people in the Capitol, uh, are in favor of keeping uh, a lid on the ability of school districts to increase their tax rates more than 2.5% per year. And there's two reasons for that. One uh, is because they are receiving another $6 billion from the state of Texas uh, to help uh, fund education. But also, it does get into uh, the sales tax swap that you said we would be getting into. Here's the deal. There's a, there's a sole purpose for the sales tax swap, then it relates to the 2.5% cap. The, the purpose of the sales tax swap is we want to, as a state, actually reduce your property tax rate by 16%. If we raise sales taxes by one penny and dedicate that sales tax increase to reducing property taxes, uh, you, your property tax bill, after this law goes into effect, will actually be lower uh, than what it is right now. Uh, it'll be uh, lower by 16% uh, on the maintenance operation component of your uh, uh, school tax bill, and it will go down every year after that. But only if we have that 2.5% cap on the amount that schools can raise your property tax rates. So if if the, if the schools are not capped at 2.5%, no sales tax increase. Yeah, because I mean, here's the deal. Uh, again, the sole purpose of the sales tax increase is to buy down your rates. And if, if local school districts could go back in and jack your rates back up, uh, that would mean that it would, it would result in a tax increase on people in the state of Texas, and that would be unacceptable. Understand this also, because I want to make this point uh, before we lose time, and that is some people say, well, a sales tax increase is, is bad. We're all going to be paying more money, all that kind of stuff. Understand this, and that is if you are a renter of property, let's say you don't own a house, uh, if you rent an apartment or rent a house, you are paying sales tax because the landlord is increasing your rent every year when the landlord has to pay uh, that, higher property tax, uh, that higher property tax bill. Understand this also, uh, and that is it, it, with the increase in sales tax, we're able to use the hundreds of millions of dollars that come in from people from out of state to the state of Texas as visitors uh, who are paying sales tax here and will be out-of-staters who will help lower our property taxes in Texas. Visiting with uh, Governor Greg Abbott. <clears throat> Here on the Chad East Show, Governor, um, have you had any discussions uh, in, in, in the Senate? Uh, and you know this. In, in the Senate, the, the, the Republicans have been lacking one vote. And uh, Senator Kel Seliger has been named by just about every media publication in the state as being the one who is against uh, SB2 in the Texas Senate. H have you or your office had any discussions with him about uh, trying to move him in, in the direction you want him to move in uh, on this bill? Well, listen, I don't know the, the inside uh, parlor game of what is going on in the Senate about uh, whose vote is where, all that kind of stuff. We, we do talk to Senator Seliger all the time about strategies that he has. He has some good strategies that would uh, put limits on the ability uh, to, to to limit appraisals, uh, which I think is a not a just a great idea, but it's a necessary idea if we're going to be able to constrain property taxes in Texas. But as far as the inside parlor game, uh, that's up to the senators and up to the uh, lieutenant governor. All right. Uh, governor, I, I know you have to go here in just a little bit, but I have to ask you, 
I had the lieutenant governor on last week, and he made some news. He announced on my show that he's running for re-election in 2022. I'll, I'll go ahead and ask you, do you plan on seeking re-election? Since he made the comment, uh, do you plan on seeking re-election in 2022? I'm going to cheat you here a tiny bit uh, because I think everyone knows yeah, that I'm planning on running for re-election, but I'm not going to be announcing it on your show today. Oh, Chad. come Sorry. on, Governor. All right. All right. We'll give you no- another opportunity down the road, okay? Exactly. Governor, I appreciate your time today, and uh, I'm sure we'll visit again as this uh, entire uh, legislative session continues. I look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. That's Governor Greg Abbott, Chad Easty Show, News Talk, KFYO.